Hi, everyone. Thanks again for joining today's webinar, Using Smart Aerial Maps for Government Analysis. I am Angela Brewster, a Marketing Manager here in NearMap. During today's session, Tyler Bailey, one of our Government Account Executives, will walk us through NearMap's aerial product offering and how you can use these Smart Aerial Maps resources for government planning, as well as quickly and easily integrate our imagery into third-party platforms. So Tyler is a member of our New Maps Mid-Market Government Sales Team. It helps, he helps cities and counties across the country realize and harness the power of Dear Map. Having been with our company for over two years, Tyler's expertise is in helping government entities unlock the full potential of Near Map. His passion centers around empowering organizations with creative ways to add value through the use of aerial imagery. Now, before we start, we do have just a couple of housekeeping items. First, you can ask questions via the control panel on your screen. Send them at any time during the presentation, and we'll get to as many as we can in the Q&A session at the end. Second, we are recording this webinar, and we'll send out a link of the recording to all attendees. And please feel free to pass it along with others who might benefit from it as well. Now, for those of you on this webinar who may not know who we are and what we do at NearMap, we are an aerial imagery company capturing data with real location intelligence. From vertical to oblique, panorama to 3D, we provide you with current crystal clear imagery for your project and planning needs. Our mission is that if we change the way people view the world, we can transform the way that you will work. Now, before I get this turned over to Tyler, we do have a very quick poll question for the group that will pop up on the screen. If you can take just a few seconds to select your answer, we will share the results momentarily. All right, so this first poll question should be launching there. What is your current imagery source? We'll give you just um, a couple seconds to answer that. All right, and we're going to close it right there. All right, and here are the results. So interesting. It looks like most of you are using satellite. We do have some that are using aircraft, other fixed wing. Um, nobody's using UAVs or drones. So that is, that is very interesting for us. So thank you so much um, for sharing that information. All right, and with that, I am going to turn this over to Tyler. Thank you, Angela. All right, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Thank you all for joining. We appreciate you taking the time out of your busy day to learn more about NearMap. So, as near as Angela said. Um, we are an aerial imagery provider. So why are we the leader in location content? In order to first answer that question, we need to understand what makes us different. Um, an internal uh, saying that we say here at NearMap is our five C's. We're gonna go over all five C's. One is going to be currency. So we currently cover about 72% of the US population on a regular regular basis. Now when I say regular basis, that means at least one time a year, if not two to three times a year, depending on the metropolitan area. Second C is going to be clear. So we capture everything at a sub three inch GSD, which is ground sample distance or 2.8 inch per pixel. Now with our newer camera system, we actually capture at a, a slightly better resolution, which is going to be 2.3 inch GSD. Now, according to that polling question, um, it looks like about 57% of you use satellite imagery. So with us being at a sub three inch per pixel, that puts us at roughly four times the resolution or four times sharper than free satellite imagery. The third is going to be change. So within our database, we have all of our historical captures. So with being a customer of NearMap, not only do you receive the most current imagery, but you also have access to all of the historical captures um, 
that is maintained in our database. The fourth C is going to be cloud-based. We are a cloud-based company. Um, you have access to our cloud-based application, which we call our map browser. We also integrate into other third-party applications as well. And our last C is going to be consistent. Um, this is one thing that differentiates us from the, the competition or other vendors out there um, is we consistently capture at the same resolution. Um, no matter the area, we're not going to switch between three inch and six inch to nine inch to 12 inch. We will consistently capture at that same resolution. The only thing that may differ is with newer camera systems, our resolution would just get even better. So again, um, the way that we're capturing imagery is via an aircraft. Um, so not satellite imagery, not drone. We have our own camera system that we put at the belly of an airplane and capture it that way. We currently capture the US, Canada, Australia, and New Zealand with plans to expand to Europe and Asia in the next few years. We capture up to three times per year in metro areas and then again, typically capturing at that sub three inch GSD. So our imagery ecosystem, um, as you can see at the top, satellite imagery, um, it's going to uh, capture the full world due to it being satellite imagery. But again, it's not going to be current, nor the resolution is, is going to be subpar. Um, and then going to the bottom, the UAV imaging or drone, now this is going to be extremely high resolution, but not scalable. Very tough to be able to capture a large area. This is typically used for a per project basis, or just capturing a very small area. We find ourselves right in the middle, the sweet spot. So still capturing at a very high res resolution, and then also capturing large areas, um, able to, uh, to do large areas instead of per project. Um, and then also offering the multi high resolution formats, which is our oblique, ortho, and 3D. This is just a quick example of how we're capturing it. We have a patented camera system that as we fly over, it's taking multiple images at a time. Some of our customers, um, to mention a few, City of Las Cruces. Um, Bear County, Texas, um, Vivint Solar, Autodesk, Esri, Clark County, Nevada, um, New York Department of Transportation, Momentum Solar. We have a lot of customers ranging from um, roofing, solar, engineering, to government um, and uh, Department of Transportation. All right, so how do we do it? Again, uh, like, like mentioned before, we have a patented camera system that we put into a belly of an airplane, capturing large areas at a time. Uh, we are constantly have planes in the air that are capturing imagery. Once we capture the imagery from the aircraft, we have a patented processing system. Um, and again, this is what's going to be the main differentiator from us and other vendors out there is typically, um, when you hire a vendor to capture imagery, it will take six to 12 months to actually receive that imagery. Whereas with our system, uh, once captured, we put it in our pro processing pipeline, and within days we have it available and published via our web application for our customers to view, um, thus making it current imagery instead of uh, receiving six to 12 month old imagery. Again, once it's done, processing it is available via the desktop you have instant access via our web application and then mentioned before we do integrate into other third-party applications such as gis and cad we have a diverse set of location content uh, we started out with just capturing our vertical imagery which is that top down this allows you to do line measurements area measurements radius measurements um, looking at that top-down view, uh, also integrating into GIS and CAD. A few years later, we came out with a new camera system that we call our Hyper Camera 2, which captures our panorama and oblique. 
our panorama is all of our oblique images, which is that 45 degree angle, stitched together as a mosaic, allowing you to have an uninterrupted pan and zoom. Now this is not measurable due to all of the images being stitched together. Um, and then we have our oblique images, which are measurable. They are spatially accurate. It is the raw photo that you are looking at that was taken from the aircraft, allowing you to get that accurate measurement. About six months ago, we came out with a 3D. So we're, we're able to derive 3D data from our oblique images. We have a 3D point cloud. We have a 3D textured mesh. We have a DSM, which is our digital surface model allowing you to visualize earth surface objects and then we are coming out with the DEM which is a digital elevation model that will allow you to visualize and analyze um, objects from a, a bare surface and then we are in the process of um, releasing our machine learning which will allow you to identify um, different objects such as pools, uh, trampolines, building footprints, solar panels, roof outlines, all from within our map browser. So this is just a quick comparison of near map versus satellite. Um, this is taken at the University of Utah Health um, Institute in Utah. Uh, as you can see, this left image is from satellite imagery, um, which is Google Earth. Uh, as you can see, there's no building. It's just a bare parking lot. Now going to the near map image, which was taken August of 2019, you can see that a full building has been constructed since then. Now, how does this help out with um, your analysis? It allows you to be able to have an accurate um, picture instead of having to do any measurements or analyses on an outdated image or not having to go out to the building and have to do it yourself. It allows you to do everything from your desktop. Going over our three products, we have our near map vertical uh, on your left. This allows you to do measurements. Oh, pardon. This allows you to do measurements from a flat surface. Our accuracy on these measurements are going to be plus or minus six inches. Next, going over to our near map panorama. Again, this is all of our oblique images stitched together, giving you that 45 degree angle with an un uninterrupted view and pan. Last is our near map oblique. Uh, this is the raw image that you're looking at from the aircraft, allowing you to do accurate height measurements of buildings, phone poles, trees, um, which, uh, whichever object that you would need. This is a quick image of one of our panorama um, pictures. Now, that, again, this is taken at a 2.3 inch per pixel, allowing you to have that very high resolution. You would also be able to uh, rotate all four cardinal views. So if you wanted to see the back side, you could quickly just flip to that back side. Going over a quick little demo of our map browser, this is our web-based application. So this is in Mandalay Bay. We're looking at our panorama. We'll go in, be able to see that 45 degree angle, and then quickly go in and panning around. Now, if we want to do a measurement right here, we'll see there's some transformers that we want to get the height measurement on. We'll quickly go to our oblique images. As you can see right here, they're unidentifiable, so we'll quickly over on that left, go through the different images that were taken from the aircraft at that time and be able to get a correct angle, do that measurement on there, and then going over to the west side, different cardinal view, you can get that other side of that transformer and do an accurate measurement. Going back to our vertical imagery, if we wanted to do the area measurement of objects on the roof or the roof itself, we could quickly do that. Again, accuracy being plus or minus six inches. If we wanted to put some text annotations in there, you can do that as well, creating a plot map for you. 
and then you can position it how you would want. Going back, we're gonna activate our split screen right here. So as you can see, this left side is going to be one date, the right side is going to be the other date. Being able to see that change over time is very important um, to see what it looked like from one date to the other. Oh, looked like it, it froze up. We'll go to that next slide. All right, so this is a near map time lapse. Very important for planning, for development, for assessing, being able to see how much a neighborhood or a city or a county has grown. Um, here in Utah, we have a lot of construction or a lot of development, so it is very important to be able to see that change over time. So as you can see through the different dates and historical captures, there's been a lot of change um, just within the last couple of years in this certain neighborhood. As mentioned, we do integrate into third-party applications. This is our vertical imagery inside of Esri's arc map, um, allowing you to do all of your planning, analysis, um, mapping, within ArcMap, but using our imagery as the base map instead of the base map that is offered inside of Esri. This is our 3D imagery that we'll go over in a bit, but this is inside of ArcGIS Pro. So again, you're able to export some of our imagery, import it into Esri, and then really do a lot of analysis within um, these programs. Quickly let you watch this. I apologize that there's a slight delay. All right, and then going to the next example. So again, this is our imagery inside of ArcGIS Online, just a quick example of what it looks like inside of the different platforms. So looking for the big picture, we got you covered in 3D. As mentioned, we started capturing uh, or we we have been capturing oblique imagery for the last couple of years and have been developing a large pipeline of 3D. We recently, about six to 12 months ago, released our 3D, um, which is shown right here. So the way that we're doing it is, again, with our aircraft capturing the vertical and the oblique, and then we are able to drape a textured mesh over our oblique imagery, which will then allow us to derive 3D data from those oblique images. So with NearMap, you're able to explore, you're able to export, our imagery and then you're able to import it into your application whether that's a gis software a cad software or just an in-house software you're able to use our imagery inside of your environment going over our 3d products uh, like mentioned we have a dsm which is a digital surface model we have a textured mesh which is viewable within our map browser application we have a point cloud, and then we have a true ortho. Our true ortho is our 3D imagery stacked on top of our vertical imagery. Now below, these are all of the different formats that we currently offer um, to export inside of our map browser, though there are many other formats that we're able to export um, if you have a preference. This is our 3D point cloud inside of Autodesk. 
quickly showing an example of this. Again, being able to do all of your um, measurement, mapping, analysis inside of the different applications, but using our imagery as the imagery provider. This is our DSM inside of ArcGIS Pro. As you can see, it shows the elevation of the different buildings. Again, D DSM standing for Digital Surface Model. We will be releasing a DEM, Digital Elevation Model. That would give you the data from a bare earth surface. All right, quick example of our 3D inside of ArcGIS Pro. Um, this is an example I like to show with um, 911 dispatch or emergency management, um, which is very important. So if I select play, you'll, you'll see that we're going to do a view shed analysis on here. Um, placing the camera in one area and then in green shows everything that you can see with that camera. In pink, it shows everything that you would not be able to see. This would allow you to place the camera in areas that you would need and then being able to plan for different event management. I worked with a customer that they, they let me know that their process right now is they have four camera systems that they have to go out when it's busy during the day, place those camera systems, uh, make sure that everything works and they can see what they need to see um, while everyone is watching and um, takes up a lot of time. Whereas we showed them this, they quickly realized and saw the value in being able to place those camera systems from their desktop and then when it's less busy during the day, go out and quickly place those cameras where they plan to place them using our imagery. All right, so how are customers using their map? Um, I worked with the customer, Kendall County, Illinois. So what they wanted to see is they wanted to see the change over time for one of their retirement homes. So as you can see, this top left picture was June of 2017. And then we capture it multiple times per year, giving you a November 17, a July of 18, October 18, April 19, and July 19. What they were going off of was 2017 data. So without using NearMap, they were looking at an area that did not have any building constructed. As you can see, just within two years, a full building has been constructed, um, parking lot around it with many different features in that building. All right, Kendall County. So one of their challenges is they had nearly 50 million added to tax rolls since the last aerials. Um, their aerials were spring of 2018. Um, and then they actually had a mandate from their supervisor of assessments to update coverage. So they came to NearMap and we were able to provide them with current, clear, and consistent imagery that covered their full area. We gave them an on-premises copy, which is an offline copy that they, they can use for their recording and for their emergency management or disaster recovery. And then a key point was we did integrate into their Esri platform. The impact is they were able to meet tax uh, roll deadlines with current imagery. Um, our imagery was able to support their workflow with integrating into Esri. And then they have plans to also integrate into their 911 dispatch um, and support law enforcement platform. So current coverage carries the day. Up-to-date aerials with obliques to assess nearly $50 million in added tax rolls. Another quick example would be um, Hillsborough County property appraisal. One of their challenges, uh, reduction in office staff, um, outdated imagery, which reduced their accuracy, and then they needed to uh, integrate into their camera system. Solution, uh, desktop change detection, being able to reduce those on-site visits and being able to do that change detection from your desk. Um, 
accurate permit comparisons uh, with current high resolution 2.8 inch imagery they were able to um, get that accurate permit comparison and then also integrating into their camera system now the impact dramatic reduction in site visits this is something that we constantly hear from our customers if we can reduce the amount of times that you have to go on site you can do the same work the same uh, analysis from your desktop this is ultimately going to save you a lot of time headache and money um, adoption by other departments um, this was just for their property appraiser and then other departments quickly saw the value and the, the um, benefit of using NIRMAP within their department so quickly uh, ad adopted NIRMAP and started using it in all of their workflows as well so some of our partners we are a gold partner with Esri so we have a seamless uh, relationship with them that you're able to integrate our imagery into their platform via a WMS web mapping service integration we also integrate into CityWorks this is a, a relatively new partnership with them we're very excited about it and have already found a lot of value in working with them as well as our customers have have seen that same value other partners include um, Autodesk so we're able to integrate into all of the AutoCAD platforms as well as Bentley systems and geocortex and a couple other third-party applications now that's quick over overview for that I want to turn the time back over to Angela for one more polling question perfect Thank you so much, Tyler, for that information and for hopefully sharing for those of you on the line how you can um, increase your government analysis using our imagery. So this last polling question has to do with how you might use 3D content. So you will see this pop up on your screen here again momentarily. And if you wouldn't mind taking just a couple of seconds to select what uh, the most likely use case for 3D content could be in your job function, we'll see um, what answers we get. So we'll give you a few seconds to select uh, an answer there. All right, we're starting to get several responses. We'll give you just a couple more seconds. All right, perfect. And we'll pop open these results. So it looks like for the most part, everybody is looking for visualization of a site or a project, um, which we hear that a lot. So it's good to know that what um, we're sharing as a value of your map is something that you're hoping to see as well with 3D. All right, now it is time for us to get into our Q&A portion um, of our webinar. So let's see here, we have got a few questions for you, Tyler. All right, let's start with this one. Um, all right, can you share what the accuracy is of your imagery? How much better is it than satellite? Yeah, great question. Um, so that second question, how much better is it, is it than satellite? So um, satellite typically will capture at six inch resolution at best. So with us being a sub three inch imagery, um, we are going to be at least four times the quality or resolution. As far as our accuracy, our current generation, which is our Hyper Camera 2, which captures at 2.3 inch GSD, ground sample distance, and has a an horizontal accuracy of 25.3 centimeters. Our earlier generation, which is our Hyper Camera 1, was capturing at a three inch imagery or three inch GSD, and had an absolute horizontal accuracy of 61 centimeters. So as you can see, as we continue to um, develop more camera systems, we're able to not only get a higher resolution, but we're able to perfect or increase that accuracy level. Perfect, thank you. All right, next question. You mentioned integrations with Esri. Are you able to geofence imagery when you integrate it into ArcGIS? 
Yeah, another great question. So as I stated, we are a gold partner with Esri, though with our earlier generation of our WMS API, so it's a, a web mapping service, what you had to do is you had to bring in all of the imagery at once at a state level. So uh, a small county or a small city that didn't necessarily want the full state imagery in there had to do that. We recently just released a WMS 2.0 that allows you to geofence a certain area or um, certain city or county that allows you to just bring in that specific area into Esri. Um, so yes, to answer your question, you are able to geofence with our brand new 2.0 WMS. Perfect. Uh, next question, can we get imagery as an offline copy as well? Yeah, so this is reserved for our government customers. Um, as stated, we are a cloud-based imagery provider, so all of our imagery is available via the web. Um, but we do offer an offline copy for our government customers, knowing that it is needed for disaster recovery, emergency management, record keeping, and then there's also many folks that uh, use the imagery on the field or in the field where they do not have um, internet access. So being able to load the imagery uh, on their device or on their machine and then being able to use it in the field. So yes, you are able to receive an offline copy um, for government entities. Perfect. Okay, this next question, um, it's kind of a, combination of several questions we've received about this. Um, so it's kind of a three-parter. First, like, how long have you been capturing imagery in the US? How can I find out if you are covering my area? And if you fly several times a year, how do you deal with leaves on trees being obstructions? Yep, all great questions. Thank you guys for asking. Um, to answer the first one, we were actually an Australian based company. So we started flying in Australia over a decade ago. We had such success in Australia that we brought it to the US um, about five years ago. So we, we started capturing, five and a half years ago, we started capturing in the fall of 2014. So you'll see some of our images dating all the way back to 2014. And then as we grow as a company, our footprint grows as well. So we, we continue to grow um, our footprint in the U.S. Again, like mentioned, we currently cover about 72% of the U.S. population. Um, the second question, how can you find out about your coverage? We do have a coverage map available on our web um, website, which is nearmap.com, um, or you can easily contact one of the near map representatives and we we can walk you through uh not only our coverage map but your area in specific to be able to see what coverage we have for you uh, the last question how do we get around the leaves with the areas that we capture two to three times a year we have strategically planned those captures with one leaf on one leaf off knowing that some um, departments or some uh, members are going to want that leaf on during certain circumstances, but then also wanting to see those leaf off to be able to see underneath the trees. So again, with those areas that we cover um, two or three times a year, you would receive one leaf on and one leaf off. Perfect. Thank you so much for that. Um, we are we have received a, a few more questions, and I think what we might do is actually respond to you um, one on one. Some of you have some very technical questions. Um, so for right now, we'll call that good for this session. And if you are interested in seeing what our content looks like in your area, we would be happy to set up a live demo at your convenience. So visit view.nearmap.com and click the Try Near Map icon in the top right corner. Thanks, Tyler, again for presenting, and thanks all of you for joining us, and have a great day.